Welcome to the Philippines Premier Motor Show. This is Autofocus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here are our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models, presently in the local market. A pickup from Ford, the next gen Ranger Wildtrak, and a subcompact SUV from Honda, the all new HRV V Turbo CVT. Plus, a feature to feature comparison of two MPVs. The GAC GN6 GE versus Hyundai Stargazer 1.5 GLS Premium IVT. On Audiopedia, we'll talk about the installation and tuning of a uni chip. Together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the highlights of the Mitsubishi Expander Cross Launch as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus, and we'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Ford. Ford Philippines offers one of the most extensive pickup trucks lineup in the country. Let's take a look at one of them in this car review, the next-gen Ford Ranger Wild Track. <laughs> When Ford launched the next-gen Ranger last year, it immediately generated a lot of interest locally. Ford Philippines did not disappoint local pickup enthusiasts by soon making the next-gen Ranger available locally soon after. At the top of the range, the next-gen Ranger Wild Track, made available in both 4x4 and 4x2 variants. The next-gen Ranger arrived all bold and confident with a wider stance, well-chiseled lines, and a new distinctive grille that looks perfectly integrated with a clamp headlamp and bumper. The next-gen Ranger is 5,370mm long, 1,980mm wide and 1,884mm tall, with a 3,270mm wheelbase, front and rear track width at 1,620mm and 235mm minimum ground clearance. There's a lot to like in the next-gen Ranger, especially in the range-topping wild track with its distinguishing grilling design and treatment. The wild track 4x4 is also distinguished by its matrix LED headlights. The 4x2 shares the LED multi-reflective headlights also found in a Ranger Sport and XLT variants. The Wild Track also features adaptive front lighting system that shifts from low beam or high beam automatically depending on speed and oncoming traffic, as well as adaptive headlight pattern when turning on curves. Other exterior features and functions like on the Wild Track include daytime running lights, auto on, off headlight with follow me home function, LED fog lamps, high mounted stop lamps, puddle lamps, rain sensing wipers, side view mirrors that power just and fold. The 18 inch alloy rims look good wrapped in 25565 R18 tires. Particularly useful and practical for pickup owners are the bed liner, rear box steps, side steps, and the easy left tailgate. The dual front tow hook smud flaps. The next gen Ranger also arrived with a bigger cargo bed box at 1,564mm long, 1,584mm wide, and 540mm tall. On the wild track, these sport barn roof rails help load more cargo. Form and function married well in the next gen Ranger. That can be also said for comfort and convenience, especially on the wild track 4x4, which arrived with an abundance of premium soft touch materials in the roomy cabin. Getting in and starting the engine is made much more convenient with the smart keyless entry and push button start system the Wild Track shares with the Ranger Sport variants. The Wild Track arrived with its own exclusive styling for the leather and leather and upholstery for the seat trim. The already comfortable driver's seat can be made even more comfortable with motors that adjust 8 ways. The front passenger has to make do with a seat that adjusts 4 ways manually. The rear bench seat can be comfortable for 2 with the center armrest down. With the center armrest folded up, it's cozy and comfortable for 3. 
All variants of the Next Gen Ranger rolled out on the Shores comes with an 8 inch digital instrument cluster. And front and center of the dash of the Wild Track is a 12 inch color touchscreen frame in portrait mode with an infotainment system that features Ford Sync at 4A system compatible with Arrow's Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, plus voice command and plays through 6 speakers. The higher-end variants of the Ranger also equipped for today's tech-savvy and mobile-connected world with windscreen-mounted USB, a platform for the wireless charger and dual USB Type-C and A ports in the front and second row on the wild track. Also cool and functional are the clever storage spaces, including door pockets, the upper globe box, on top of the dash, storage bins under and behind the rear seats. Keeping all corners cool in the wild track cabin is a new dual-zone air conditioning system with automatic temperature control. The wild track also has standard comfort and convenience features expected in top-end pickups. Power windows, auto dimming rear view mirrors, auxiliary 12 volt power outlets, 230 volt inverter in the second row of the cabin and in the cargo area. On the road in the next gen Ranger, one can immediately feel the difference in ride and handling from the previous generation. The improvements to the chassis and suspension, the wider track, the longer wheelbase, but front wheels move forward. All work to make drivers and passengers both comfortable and confident both on and off road. Suspension works fine with light or heavy load with double wishbone with cold spring anti roll bar in front and leaf springs in the rear. Stopping power comes from ventilated discs on all four wheels on the wild track. Ford Philippines brought in the next-gen Ranger with a 2-liter bi-turbo diesel engine made with a 10-speed automatic transmission for the 4x4 wild track variant capable of maxing out at 210 PS and 500 Nm of torque. The other variants arrive with a 2.0L single turbo made with a 6-speed automatic or manual transmission capable of 170 PS of maximum power and 405 Nm of maximum torque, numbers that are still respectable. But it's the wild track that is more fun to drive. The Wild Track 4x4 also comes with a terrain management system and a complement of advanced driver assistive technologies that make the next-gen Ranger safer for both the driver and occupants of the pickup, but also motorists and road users. This suite of smart driver assist technologies including, among other things, adaptive cruise control with stop and go and lane centering, lane keeping assist with road edge detection, autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian detection, forward collision warning, lane keeping aid and lane departure warning, pre-collision assist with intersection, dynamic brake support, driver alert system, evasive steer assist, and auto high beam. The wild track also comes with a 360-degree camera that provides multiple views of the large center display, 360 birds eye view and 180-degree front and rear split views. Also for safety, the wild track comes with hill launch assist and rollover mitigation, hill descent control, 7 airbags, anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, electronic stability control with traction control system, and electric brake booster. At the local launch of the next Ranger, Ford said the next gen Ranger is the smartest, most versatile, and most capable Ranger ever. That is surely true. It can perhaps even argue that it may be the smartest, most versatile and capable pickup in the country at the moment. There's really a lot to like in the next gen Ford Ranger Wild Track. And Ford Philippines wants to match that with an enhanced ownership experience. Starting off with 5 year and 150,000 kilometer warranties. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track and the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. Mitsubishi Strata Athlete, confident to the core. Welcome back to Autofocus. We now have the latest auto industry news. Those lucky enough to be among the first to get the all-new Honda Civic Type R got another treat, a day at the Clark International Speedway learning about their new ride. We are here at uh, Clark International Speedway and basically what we did was to provide uh, our customers and our friends from the media the opportunity to experience the all-new Civic Type R. Auto Cars Philippines invited the owners of the all-new Civic Type R as well as those of older Type R's to Clark for a comprehensive program of driving and track orientation to better appreciate the performance capabilities of their cars. 
specific Type R customers were able to test the power of Honda's renowned high-performance hatchback through driving exercises and open laps. Aside from the performance driving courses and seat time on the track, the owners of the Civic Type R's got a free 18-point vehicle inspection. Owners of the all-new Type R also got to test the new enhanced version of the Honda Log R Performance Data Logger, which combines its onboard computer and sensors with a new built-in vehicle app that helps drivers monitor and record a variety of performance parameters. So not only that we have guided lapping and learning all the features of the vehicles, but we also have a time attack of the go-kart where our dealer partners, our media friends, and of course our Type R participants can join and beat the time that was set by our president, Nakamura-san. The day ended with the awarding of certificates for completing the driving courses and those who performed well. I think if the, every participant enjoyed this event, yeah, we want to try to continue such kind of event and also we want to gather more Type R customers we want to say, uh, now we are very sorry that there are so many customers still waiting the new type R, but uh, we promised we will import a second batch uh, middle of this year. The Range Rover Sport has arrived, completing the lineup of the premium SUV from Land Rover, now made available in the country by official local distributor Coventry Motors Corp. The launch was held at the poolside of the Solera Casino and Hotel. So we've launched tonight the third generation of the Range Rover Sport. So it first came out in 2005 and since then, around what, 18 odd years, it's gone through two versions and now we've tonight released and launched the amazing third generation in the Range Rover Sport line. The Range Rover Sport is aimed at more owners who want to drive their own SUVs, especially in weekend road trips outside of the city. But if you want to have be driven, if you want to drive yourself and you want to have that performance, then you go for this that we've launched tonight, the Range Rover Sport. It's incredibly dynamic and it's a high performance SUV. Three variants of the Ranger Rover Sport are being offered locally. We've brought three models in at an SE trim level. Um, and you know, there's a choice between a diesel inline six cylinder, three litre, or you can have a plug in hybrid, which is a three litre petrol, again, an inline six cylinder, super smooth, but mated up to 105 kilowatt battery. And that combined gives a mind boggling performance and a range of over 850 kilometres when you combine electric and the gas. Price wise, the plug-in hybrid is our best value at 13,490 because there's some great government support on bringing in this new tech. But if you still want to go for diesel, then the diesel is at 13,990, or you can have what they call a dynamic, which is a real slightly altered visually look, um, more aggressive, more dynamic looking, and that's 14.8. The Range Rover Sport will be the last major launch for the local this year with Coventry Motors focusing on meeting the huge demand for Land Rover SUVs. The next major launches will be happening next year when Coventry Motors rolls out fully electric models. The key is next year and the future because we start to go full electric option. And that we start to do from late 2024 for both Range Rover Sport and its larger brother, the full-size Range Rover. And then we go on a journey of transitioning all our cars full electric so the future um, is coming and it's coming really quick those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry we shall take another short break stay with us i'll be right back Who said happiness can only be found on the ground? Next generation Ford Ranger. Do the undone. Reserve yours now on Ford.com.ph or at your nearest Ford dealer.
Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Here's our comparison of the latest automobile models belong to the same category on Head to Head. The MPV market is awash with good options. This head-to-head -head pits the GAC GN6 GE against the Hyundai Stargazer 1.5 GLS Premium IVT in a spec-to-spec -spec compile. Seven-seater MPVs are among the first options Filipinos look at when choosing a vehicle for their family. They provide the space, comfort, and convenience families seek for all its members. Automakers and distributors have taken to offer MPVs with as much of the modern conveniences and safety features as well as premium items families now expect in the higher end of the market. The 2023 Hyundai Stargazer is among the latest to join the compact MPV segment. Let's compare the Stargazer offers against the GAC GN6 GE, which had joined the market earlier. The 2023 Hyundai Stargazer 1.5 GLS Premium IVT is 4,460mm long, 1,780mm wide and 1,695mm tall with a 2,780mm long wheelbase and a minimum ground clearance of 185mm. The GN6 is longer, wider and taller at 4,780mm long, 1,860mm wide and 1,730mm tall with a 2,810mm long wheelbase. The Stargazer arrived looking like it came from the future or from space with a unique design and placement of headlamps, daytime running lights, and fog lamps. The headlamps in the 1.5 GLS Premium IVT are LEDs and feature auto light control. Also looking quite futuristic are the rear combination lamps using both LEDs and bulbs. The top of the line Stargazer also features chrome outside door handles, body color rear view mirrors that come with turn signal lights and electric folding function, rear spoiler with high mount stoplight, and shark fin antenna. The GAC GN6 looks more contemporary but distinctive nonetheless with its stylish grille, the eagle eye headlamp design with wing light DRLs, an integrated bumper with the uniquely framed fog lamps, side view mirrors with integrated turn signal indicators and a sunroof. The top of the line Stargazer features smart key and push button start as well as remote engine start function. The roomy Stargazer cabin comes with leather and upholstery for seats. Also in leather it is a steering wheel that tilts in telescopes and comes with buttons and switches to control the audio and such functions as cruise control. The middle row seat for 3 splits 60-40, double folds and slides. The third row seat for 2 splits 50-50. The instrument cluster comes in a 4.2-inch TFT information display. Other comfort and convenience features include central door locking, power windows with key fob remote function, fully automatic air conditioning, multiple USB charging points, wireless charging and overhead console with lamp, cup beverage holders on front doors, center console, and seat back tables. The GAC GN6 also comes with keyless entry and push button start. The GN6 cabin features leather seats for 7 and 2 captain's chairs in the second row that slide and recline, and bench seat for 3 with matching headrests in the third row that can be folded flat to increase luggage space from 324 liters to 1,100 liters. The dashboard comes with a 7-inch instrumentation and 8-inch infotainment displays housed in a single panel. Other comfort and convenient features include an adjustable steering wheel with controls for the audio and cruise control, automatic climate system with vents for rear passengers, electronic parking brake, power outlets, cup and beverage holders, and USB ports. The center console also features cockpit controls. The Stargazer infotainment system comes in an 8-inch touchscreen display with Bluetooth, Android Auto, and Apple CarPlay and 6 speakers. The GN6 infotainment system features 8-inch touchscreen, Bluetooth connectivity, Apple CarPlay, and 6 speakers. The Stargazer is powered by a SmartStream G1.5 engine with a 1,497cc displacement which generates 115 PS and 14.7 kg per meter of torque and is mated to Hyundai's Intelligent Variable Transmission or IVT driving the front wheels. The suspension system uses McPherson struts in front and Hyundai CTBA or coupled torsion beam axle in the rear. Stopping power comes from 15-inch disc brakes in front and 9-inch drops in the rear. The GN6 is powered by a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline 4 gasoline engine that generates 170 horsepower and 265 Nm of torque sent to the front wheels by a 6 speed automatic transmission. GAC equipped the GN6 with front L type McPherson struts and rear twist beam. The brake system uses front ventilated and rear solid discs. The Stargazer 1.5 GLS Premium comes with nearly a full complement of Hyundai's ADAS or Advanced Driver Assistance System. These advanced features include blind spot collision avoidance assist, rear cross traffic collision avoidance assist, line cubic assist, driver attention warning, safe exit warning, forward collision avoidance assist, lane following assist, tire pressure monitoring system, high beam assist. 
Other standard safety features include hill start assist control, electronic stability control and hill lock braking system, manual speed limit assist, parking distance warning, rear view monitor, rear seat alert. Also added for safety are dual front, side and curtain airbags and child seat anchors. The GL6 comes with a host of standard safety and some advanced driver assist technologies from anti-lock brakes with electronic brake force distribution, the electronic stability program, traction control, hill ascent and descent controls. It also comes with rear sensors and camera as well as three-point seat belts, dual front and side airbags, Isofix child seat anchors, engine immobilizer, and anti-theft alarm. The MPV market can be said to be a buyer's market with families having a lot of good options to choose from that would meet their wants, needs, and budget, including the Hyundai Stargazer and the GAC GN6. Asahan kailangan na matibay Pang matagalan kasama mo sa pag-unlad ng negosyo Modernong disenyo kaya-kaya ang cargo mo Nang tatak na ito Isuzu Trap is level up with Isuzu Level up mo ang iyong negosyo Isuzu Trap is level up with Isuzu Level up with Isuzu Trap is Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions. The WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has antioxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph The Mitsubishi Strata Athlete, confident to the core. Welcome back to All of Focus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. What 7-seater MPV arrived with SUV performance and functionality in an aggressively styled package? Find out in this special feature. Hi, we are here tonight at McKinley Whiskey Park here in BBC for the launch of the new Expander Cross. This is the newly launched Expander Cross. As you can see, we're in an outdoor venue. A very, very new venue fitting for this very outdoorsy, very fun model. So this is the latest iteration of the Expander nameplate. So as you know, this is the best-selling MPV in the country. So it's an MPV X SUV. MPV, it has the versatility, the functionality of an MPV, and also the toughness of an SUV. The new Expander Cross is now available in a dealership near you, so I'd like to invite everyone to test drive this MPV X SUV. So it really feels different, especially from our other models. It's very tough, very rugged. So you can also visit our website to book a test drive or book a quotation at mitsubishi-motors.com.ph. Mitsubishi is riding high in the MPV segment with the Expander and the new Expander Cross can only take it higher. 
What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the Toyota We Go. Mitsubishi Strada Athlete, confident to the core. Are you into grassroots racing, slaloms, autocross, time attacks, and circuit racing? Do you like to keep your daily ride in tip-top condition? Do you want to improve the performance and ride of your vehicle? Then head over to Fix Stop Auto Service along 91 Congressional Avenue, Project 8 in Kazan City. Fix Stop Auto Service can level up the performance and ride of your daily rider weekend racer of all brands, models, and makes from Japanese, American, European, and all other global manufacturers. Fix Stop Auto Service offers preventive maintenance services as well as upgrades of brakes, suspension, and other mechanical works. Fix Stop also caters to all your needs for performance tires and accessories to make your dream vehicle stand out on the road or for just your enjoyment. For appointments, call 0917-803-8283 or message us on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash fixstopautoservice. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. Carview checks out the all-new Honda HRV. What's new in Honda's popular subcompact crossover? Subcompact crossovers or SUVs are now among the more sought-after vehicles in the local market. They are mostly affordable, fun to drive, and versatile. Great as the daily drive on weekdays, not that many are returning to face-to-face -face work at the office. Great for weekend road trips and adventures now that road trips are no longer restricted. Some are stylish, sporty, or both. Honda Cars Philippines is banking on the newly arrived all-new Honda HRV to be among the most popular in the crossover segment. After all, Honda sold more than 7,000 units of its predecessor since it debuted in 2015. The formal unveiling of the third-generation HRV revealed a crossover that is more sleek than sporty, although Honda says it went for the sporty look in the development. Nonetheless, the new Honda HRV looks stylish in a stately sort of way. Two variants of the new HRV were unveiled, the V Turbo CVT and the S CVT. The top of the line V Turbo is 4,385mm long, 1,790mm wide, and 1,590mm tall. Just a wee bit longer, 55mm longer to be exact, but just as wide and tall as its lower priced sibling, the SCVT. Interestingly enough, Honda lists the SCVT as sitting higher above the road than the V Turbo CVT. 196mm ground clearance compared to 181mm. The added length can be easily explained by the sport type front bumper with the amp up line as well as the sport type spoiler that distinguishes the V Turbo CVT from the SCVT. Other distinguishing features are the black mesh type grille the platinum headlight extension, the dual tape pipe finishers, and of course the turbo emblem. Both, however, share full LED headlights that come with auto on-off function with 15-second timer, LED daytime running lights, projector type fog lamps, side turn signal lights integrated in the side door mirrors, LED taillights with light bar, LED high mount stop lamp, shark and antenna, tailgate spoiler, and rear intermittent wipers with washer. The V Turbo CVT can also be distinguished from its sibling by its 17-inch gray alloy wheel strap by 215-60 R17-96-8 tires. Honda has gone on the premium side to sell the new HRV with the V Turbo CVT getting more of the pricey stuff, like the rich leather upholstery for the seats. But the fabric upholstery on the SCVT doesn't look shabby at all. In fact, it looks quite rich and yes, sporty. Also wrapped in leather are the steering the shift knob. The cabin of the HRV V Turbo CVT also looks positively posh with the black and silver accents. No silver accents on the SCVT. The HRV can sit five adults comfortably. The driver's seat slides and reclines and adjusts for height. The front passenger seat just slides and reclines. The second row features Honda's patented ULT seat, ULT for utility, long and tall. 
The seat for three splits and folds flat 6040 comes in the rear armrest. The V-Turbo CVT dash and instrumentation is quite tidy and modern with a 7-inch digital display. The rotary knobs for the air conditioning look cool and make controlling cabin temperature quite easy. Motrims of the new HRV comes with a single zone automatic air conditioning with a new air diffusion system that cools the cabin more efficiently as well as rear air vents. Both variants of the HRV share the same 8 inch touchscreen display for the infotainment system, which comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Bluetooth, hand free telephone, audio streaming, USB input, and six speakers. They also share many of the modern conveniences found in premium vehicles, including smart keyless entry with one push start system, power windows and door locks, auto power folding door mirrors. Both also share the comfort and convenience features now standard in crossovers, ambient cabin lighting, four bottle holders, four cup holders, 12 volt accessory socket, sun visors with illuminated mirrors, map lights, cargo area lights, tonneau cover. The V Turbo CVT adds auto dimming rear view mirrors and two rear USB charging ports. Honda is making a lot of local car enthusiasts happy by offering the HRV with a turbocharged engine. Honda says the brief for developing the all new HRV was to come with a subcompact crossover that combines functionality, safety, and advanced features, sophisticated design, and superior driving experience. The 177 PS and the 240 Nm of torque from the turbocharged 1498cc 4 cylinder VTEC engine on the top of the line HRV certainly helped fulfill the superior driving experience part of the brief. Although you can't say the SCVT is a slouch with the 121 PS and 145 Nm of torque from its 1.5 liter IVTEC inline 4 engine. Only a continuously variable transmission is available in the local spec HRV with paddle shifters offering some control over gear shifts. The steering wheel tilts and telescopes to provide a comfortable driving position. It also comes with controls for audio, the HFT, the multi information display, among other things to make motoring more convenient. The V Turbo CVT powertrain offers three driving modes Econ, Normal, and Sport, much appreciated in these times of spiraling fuel prices. On Sport mode, not available in the SCVT, the HRV is a truly fun drive. The HRV rides road imperfections well with front McPherson struts and axle type suspension in the rear. The suspension also provides a stable ride even when taking switchbacks on Sport mode. The all wheel disc brake system, ventilated in front, comes with an auto brake hold function. The electronic parking brake does away with space eating handbrake lever. The all-new Honda HRV comes standard with Honda Sensing, a suite of driver assist technology with functions to give drivers a lot of confidence in driving on crowded city streets, open highways, and mountain roads. Honda Sensing includes collision mitigation braking system, adaptive cruise control with low speed follow, lane keeping assist system, road departure mitigation system with lane departure warning, auto high beam and lead car departure notification system. Drivers will also have to get used to various tones and beeps that warn or alert them of obstacles or possible dangers on the road. Also giving confidence about being protected in the HRV are status safety features that include 3-point ELR seat belts with reminder for 5, front and side airbags, speed sensing door locks, Isofix child seat anchors. The HRV also comes with anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, vehicle stability assist, hill descent control, hill start assist, and agile handling assist. Whether with a turbocharged VTEC or just the iVTEC engine, the all-new HRV should heighten the senses with its looks, advanced driver assist and safety tech, and comfort and smart connectivity features. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Hey, today we'll be showing you how a unit chip is installed how it is tuned and what are the benefits of actually getting one installed in your car. And uh, here we have a 2017 Toyota Vios with the latest dual VVTi engine that already has an intake and a header. So we're going to be installing Unichip next on this car to get more power. In a nutshell, what Unichip is, it's a computer that goes on top of the stock ECU and we're able to program this to give different commands to the ECU that says, okay, give us more fuel, give us less fuel, give us more spark plug timing, give us less spark plug timing, and among other things. More advanced features are we could use this to control additional injectors to supply a turbocharger, injector controllers for diesel engines, nitrous control, 
and sometimes also map switching. We can have up to five different maps for this one, such as if you want valley mode, total shutdown mode, immobilizer mode, and all of that. And this is where Unichip is installed. It's going to be installed very, very near the car's ECU, which in this case for the Vios, it's hidden behind the glove compartment. So it's eight wires to install. On most other cars nowadays, the computer box is usually found in the engine bay. Like if you have a Civic, you have a Jazz, you have a Focus. All the computer boxes are now found inside the engine and that's where Unichip will also be installed. So the way that we install it is we have to cut and splice a few wires. It's normally about eight. Those are power, ground, uh, throttle position, crank position, mass airflow sensor, among other things. So every joint we actually solder and then we shrink wrap and we tape over. So rest assured that nothing will get shorted, nor will it catch fire. That simply does not happen. This is a Unichip wiring diagram, only we have access to it, the official Unichip installer for the Philippines, which is us in Speed Lab. In the Unichip database, there are over a thousand cars that have diagrams for it. It ranges from something as old as a 1996 Corolla 4AFA engine to the latest Ranger Raptor, which we're going to be available in a few months. So it's basically eight wires here. These are the eight wires that connect to the Unichip, then these eight wires connect to the wiring harness of the ECU. It's, by the way, just the wiring harness, not the ECU itself. We don't open this up, we don't touch this, so that remains as is. A little bit of history about Unichip. This has been around actually for the better part of 25 years. The guy who invented it, Peter De Vert, is Dutch. He currently lives in South Africa. That's where he produces it. I think he gets a special government grant from the South African government for that one. And then it's actually exported all over the world. Uh, you can check it out on the internet, you can check out all the reviews, it's there. It's Unichip because it really is universal. We can use it for pretty much anything with an ECU. Gas, diesel, Chinese, European, American, Japanese, Korean cars. As long as it's an ECU, most likely we can install Unichip on it. So there are still certain cars like this Toyota Vios. You cannot remap the ECU. You cannot change the settings inside the ECU. So your only option for tuning is with the Unichip. All right, now uh, the Unichip is now connected to the ECU. For this particular car, we're using the Unichip Q4, which has an additional four wires to control the throttle because all cars now have electronic throttle. Uh, what this basically does is it equalizes the throttle opening because with all cars nowadays what happens is you step on the pedal this fast the throttle butterfly opens this fast that's the delay that everybody is complaining about with all modern cars you step on it like this it goes like this so what the unit chip does with the throttle control is it makes it one is to one you step on it fast it opens fast also so resulting in a mas malakas may bat na koche. So right now, it's connected to the ECU, everything's working, the car's running, the engine is running, uh, it revs fine, there are no check engine lights whatsoever, so that means that the installation is done correctly and everything is working. Uh, with every unit chip install, we actually put in a unique starting program depending on what the ECU is. Uh, in the Unichip database, there are over 100 starting programs for 100 different cars and 100 different vehicle models and makes and engines actually. So after this one, we're going to be putting the car on the dyno and we're going to be tuning it there to see what the final horsepower is. And horsepower and torque, actually. So stay tuned for that one. We're going to be putting it on now. Okay, we're done with the tuning of the Vios here with the Unichip and this is the results. This red line here is the baseline power. This already has our colder intake and our headers. So it's about 91 horses, which is actually pretty good for a 1.3 car. For reference, 90 horses or so is the territory of about 1.5 cars like the Jazz and the 1.5 Vios. This blue line here 
is after tuning with the Unichip. So at peak power, we're at 100 horses, so it's almost 10 horses more at 6,000 RPM. But the biggest gain here is actually, if you look at the torque graph on this side, at the initial step, there's about 6 foot-pounds here. This is even bigger, it's about 8 foot-pounds. Then this dip here is another 8 foot-pounds. So, and this is at the very critical 1,800 to 3,500 area where most of your overtaking happens. So the end result is a faster car, more powerful, a lot more responsive, and drive normally. Given this, you should see about 8 to 10 percent better mileage. So that's basically the whole unit chip install and tuning process. As from start to finish, it took us about three hours total from wiring up the car to putting it on the dyno to tuning it to getting out of the dyno. So it's probably less than half a day. And, and you walk away with 10 horses on a 1.3 Vios. For other cars, say bigger engines like a 1.8 Civic, it's anywhere from 12 to 15 horses more. For turbo diesels, we actually get 40, sometimes 50 horses more. The best part is when you sell the car, you can actually take the unit chip out install it in whatever next car that you're going to purchase be a gasoline car diesel car any brand as long as it has an ecu your unit chip can be installed in that and can be tuned again reused make more power for your new car that's our feature in autopedia this week taking care of your ride has been made easier and that's all the focus this week. We hope you have found this edition of Electronic Automobile Magazine informative as well as entertaining. Check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.